Welcome back again. We're carrying on with our series of uh, interviews with Babette Rothschild concerning her book, Eight Keys to Safe Trauma Recovery. Uh, we've talked about Forgive Your Limitations. And, and now I'd like to say something about this key that you've called Share Your Shame. Well, actually, that title has two meanings. I called that, uh, actually, it's one key, forgive yourself and, and, and share your shame. And the share your shame part has two aspects. The one is that shame, the nature of shame as an emotion, tends to be very isolating. The common reaction of someone when they're feeling ashamed is to withdraw and to isolate themselves. Probably anybody here in this interview will recognize them in, that in themselves when they feel that rise of heat that comes with shame. The, the tendency is to want to withdraw and go away, either to hide or to, to remove themselves from whatever a situation is. And trauma itself is so isolating. People who are suffering from trauma tend to be so isolated that one of the things I'm hoping to help them with is to come out of that isolation. And a way to do that is to share their shame with one or more trusted, caring, supportive others. And so I'm outlining and, and discussing some ways in which they might approach doing that in a safe way. Mm. This would be to help people to reconnect with the world. Reconnect the with the world, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And recon reconnect with others. And hear about other people who are ashamed, which is also mm. a way of coming out of that isolation. Shame is such a, a normal thing to feel, but it feels so horrible. Sure. And you were saying that there's two sides. Okay. So the second aspect of that title, Share Your Shame, um, involves uh, the phenomenon that, that many people who feel shame in the wake of trauma are carrying a load of shame that isn't only theirs. And that happens quite often, for example, with people who have suffered, either as an adult or a child, some kind of physical or sexual abuse. It can be domestic violence, it can be child abuse, it can be a molestation, it can be a rape. Any kind of physical intrusion often carries with it a, a huge weight of shame. And in that case, there is the, the shame the person feels for themselves and what happened to them. And there's also, I believe, the shame of the perpetrator that the perpetrator wasn't feeling. Um, it's my proposal that shamelessness is a worse problem in trauma than shame because if someone wasn't shameless, they wouldn't perpetrate the physical or the sexual intrusion. But what happens, what seems to happen, I find, in working with people who have this depth of shame in response to such events is that they're carrying both their own shame and the shame of the perpetrator. And so I'm wanting them to reapportion and share out, so to speak, mm. the shame that they're feeling so that they're giving back to the perpetrator symbolically, in essence, their load of shame and only carrying their own. Yeah. So that they're sharing the shame. Right. So they're kind of saying, shame on you to the people. In a sense, yes. It. Yes. Well, thank you. I think you've covered what's perhaps quite a sensitive and difficult uh, uh, subject uh, very well. And we'll go on to look at the other keys in uh, the next in our series of interviews. Thanks very much. Sure, and I just want to say I think you're right that the, the issue of shame and forgiveness is probably the most the most sensitive issue in, in trauma recovery and um, I hope this preview interview will help people with that. Thanks, Bob.